Hi, my name is Florian van Dille. I work as a full stack developer and architect at 4.net. Uh, we work with our customers both long and short periods of time, uh, mostly in a consulting capacity. Uh, what I like best about Dapper is how easy it is to focus on the business logic of the application. You don't have to pay much attention to all the underlying infrastructure. Um, you can just configure your components, uh, you're good to go. Uh, and also you can swap the components and that's a really powerful thing uh, because you can do something uh, locally and then do something entirely different when you upload your application to the cloud. Uh, so that's extremely powerful and that's one of the best things I like about uh, Dapper. So at our customer, uh, the problem that we faced is that we are migrating all, uh, all things from a monolithic legacy application and we're rebuilding it into distributed applications. And the main issue with that is that there was a lot of inconsistency in the way that application uh, it was talking to the inf underlying infrastructure. Um, and using Dapper, we were able to set a solid standard for app development uh, that increased performance but it was also easy to understand for a lot of developers from different levels. So all the code needs to do is actually interact with the Dapper client, uh, since we're using the .NET SDK uh, in our case. Um, and it's just really easy to just have that mental model of your Dapper client, your code talks to that, and the Dapper sidecar actually takes care of all the communication with the infrastructure. So there's no need to actually take that into account while building the business logic. An important learning moment for us was when we learned how to use uh, Dapper in combination with cloud events, with the PubSub uh, model, um, and what you can use those cloud events for. So you can put a lot of metadata in your uh, into your events, um, and we were coming from an implementation that didn't have that metadata in in, in the messaging uh, going on, um, and. How you can use that is very nice um, uh, when you, for example, use typing in your in your different messages to uh, differentiate between the kinds of messages that you're sending. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, and also one of the game changers for us were, were the resiliency policies. Um, so once you know how much you can do by just simply configuring a resiliency policy, well, you can basically make all the bad stuff that's happening, uh, you can make it go away. Uh, so your app continues to function uh, even when you're facing errors or outages or anything. Um, so yeah, that's really uh, one of the best uh, things we learned from using Dapper. Uh, would I use Dapper uh, in a similar project again? Um, absolutely, uh, yes. Um, well, I've seen developers enjoy uh, using Dapper because it's really simple when you only have your application code uh, talking to the Dapper client. Um, so it's really nice not having to worry about all the infrastructure. Um, and what I like is that the local development is greatly improved, especially when working with the PubSub model. Um, uh, more recently, we had uh, multiple developers rely on a, a service bus namespace in the cloud. Um, and you saw that sometimes it happened when uh, uh, one developer pushed a lot of messages to the topics, uh, then a, a different developer that was accidentally in a debug session would handle those uh, messages. Um, well, and now you have your local Redis environment where you can just publish your messages to. Uh, it, it stays on your developer machine um, and, and you can just handle those messages in private uh, without having to interfere with the work of any other uh, developer. So yeah, that's uh, a huge time saver. Uh, and as soon as your app goes to the cloud, it just changes uh, the, the PubSub component to uh, Azure Service Bus in our case, and it just runs uh, just the same. So yeah, uh, I would absolutely do that again because it, it, it helps us a lot. Two tips that I can give new Dapper developers is learn uh, the metadata of your components. And it's all explained in the documentation, which metadata values you can set, uh, what values it, it, it expects. Um, it makes your life a lot easier knowing how you can manipulate the behavior of your components. Uh, and as well, learn the HTTP APIs of the Dapper sidecar, so you can manually invoke a method or manually send a pub sub message. Uh, it really helps your understanding of what the Dapper sidecar does, how it communicates, um, and what you can do with it. So um, yeah, I would definitely learn those two things.